First from the east, the ram conducts the year, whom Ptolemy with twice nine stars adorns, of which only two claim the second rank. Here we are in Aries, the ram, also known as Al Hamal, the sheep, and as Prince of the Zodiac, because as our verse suggests, Aries conducts the year between 2000 BCE and the first century at the vernal equinox in the northern hemisphere, the sun would have occurred in this constellation. Due to procession of the equinoxes, however, that's moved over to Pisces, and then we will be in the age of Aquarius next. It's the 48th brightest star in the sky, and it's a K-type orange giant, about twice as massive as the sun, with a magnitude varying between 1.98 and 2.04. Uh, Alhamar is 66 light years away. The second brightest star here is Sheraton, Beta Aretis, the second horn. Its name means the second sign or the pair, and it's thought that this star and the gamma were the closest stars to marking the vernal equinox. Here at SLU, we are exploring an open cluster named NGC 188, and this is a, a pretty bright one, in, uh, and despite that, we don't look at it very much. It's not an M object. It wasn't discovered by Carl Messier or even listed by him. Looking at M31, the 31st object cataloged by Charles Messier. And here, for the first time, we're seeing a galaxy. All of his listed objects from M1 through M30 were things in our own galaxy. Open clusters, globular clusters, uh, even planetary nebulae. But here, for the first time, we're looking beyond all the stars of the night sky to an elliptical blob that's quite easily seen to the naked eye away from the lights of cities or towns and therefore it's been noticed since probably since neanderthal times certainly it has appeared in writings as long ago as 1000 a.d but its nature was unknown because it looked like a little blob of gas and uh, therefore believed to be a nebula and even today we still use the word the andromeda nebula sometimes because that's what appeared in textbooks until the true nature was finally revealed by the large telescopes of the early 20th century. The great astronomers of the time a few centuries ago wrongly thought that the blob could not be farther than about 17,000 light years, but it's two and a half million light years away. So we're looking at a huge object, a city of suns, that's quite similar to our own Milky Way galaxy. In fact, it may be a little larger in physical size, but in terms of how much stuff is in it, and by stuff we're adding together the stars, any planets, clouds of uh, nebulae that are giving off either glows or that are dark, other dust clouds, black holes, everything we could think of, add them all together, and our own Milky Way galaxy's total weight or mass is about 1.9 trillion suns. But this, M31, the Andromeda galaxy, is 1.23 trillion suns. So it's a little bit lighter weight than our own galaxy, despite being perhaps slightly larger in size, which means the material is more spread out. We really didn't know the distance because it's far too distant for trigonometric parallax to be able to show us a direct measurement of distance. However, in 1923, Edwin Hubble using the new 100-inch Hooker telescope in California, found the first Cepheid variables in the Andromeda galaxy, and this gave us its distance for the very first time. 
It's been refined since then, and we now know it to be 2.5 million light years away. So we're looking at by far the farthest object in the Messier catalog up to this point from M1 to M31, and a really grand galaxy. You can see dust lanes, look closely. We can't really see spiral arms because the galaxy is almost sideways to us. It's tilted, unfortunately, only 13 degrees from edgewise. If it was edgewise, wow, it would look spectacular the way edgewise galaxies like NGC 4565 look and uh, use the slew telescopes and look at edgewise galaxies like that. Or if it was face on to us, like M51, let's say, it would look spectacular because then we could see the spiral arms. Instead, it's tilted just enough so that the indications of spirality are showed by these dark dust lanes that should be quite obvious in these views. Spectacular object, the Andromeda Galaxy. For slew and offer.